we'll see. We will see. Okay, I've got the six day man blanket. I don't need that right now. There it is, six day hexagon cardigan. Yeah, and I think people on TikTok I, are the nicest and the most fun. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> okay, looks like I'm live on my other um, platform, so I'm just going to play my little song. Here we go. My son wrote this little theme song for me. Hello, I am Betty McNitt, and this is the six day, wear your six day kid blanket crochet along. And this is the third day, and there are six days of it. Um, so we have, um, what, today and three more days, right? Um, okay, I need a thing, never mind. All right, uh, deep breaths. I, let's see, I, the six day hexagon cardigan is a traditional, um, traditional, I don't know how traditional a hexagon cardigan is. I remember seeing these people start to make these, I don't know, maybe three or four years ago, there was something called the campfire cardigan. And I think that kind of started this trend of crocheters making these. Usually you see it like in like a granny square, just the granny square stitches, but I adapted the six day kid blanket granny square into the six day kid blanket hexagon. And that's what these sweaters are made out of. It's six rows, two rows of single crochet. Um, it's actually one row of single crochet, two rows of like granny square stitches, another row of single crochet and two rows of double crochet. That's um, the pattern. And uh, let me just put this up on the um, overhead so TikTok can see what I'm talking about and what I'm doing. And I'll get started. <clears throat> or I'll continue, I guess. So if you're here um, watching on Facebook, I was starting to say when I was setting up that, oh, I have to flip my screen. Uh, effects. Near the video. Okay. Here we go. Here's how I, thanks for following. Here's how I finished up last night. This is two days of work, two days. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? I mean, it's pretty good. These sweaters come together pretty quickly. So I have, I think I've been complaining about the gnats on these lives. I put some of those little traps out. I took some measures. I didn't know the gnats were coming from the house plants, but um, now I know. And so I have taken measures to remove them. And this is the only room that I have experienced gnats in today. So if you see me going like this, it's because I have a gnat. But I brought one of the traps in here. Let me flip this. So I was saying, um, I was, I was saying a few moments ago that Facebook does not behave. They have made some updates to the platform and it does not behave the same way it did a few months ago. And that has been my main platform for um, most of the time I've been Betty McNitt. And it's just not acting the same way as it did. I can't update comments. I can't access certain things. It's not letting me tag my products. So if you're, if you're over on in the Facebook groups, I just 
want to, I know, but a lot of people don't like TikTok, but I just want to encourage you to like follow me on another platform and not only Facebook because it's not, I just, I'm worried like one day it's just going to go away or stop working or my group is going to be like, you know, not available. Hey, look who it is. Oh my goodness. I want you to come live with me. Can you request? Yes, invite. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Can I see you? Um, I let me see. Yes, I can see you. Um, I'm gonna look at you on my other device. I have to. I have to plug this in. Oop. I'm so excited you're here. So happy to meet you. Oh my goodness. You're wearing your sweater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love this thing. Right now I'm working on a, um, oh my God, what is this called? Not a baguette. What is this called? A beret. <laughs> a beret. <laughs> a baguette. <laughs> you can wear the beret. And go to France yeah. and get yourself a baguette. <laughs> yeah, so I tried the free-handed, but I don't know. I think it might be too small. But I don't know. It's not done yet. I don't know. <laughs> it's cute. Oh, my goodness. I just, I feel like you are so cute. You can make anything look good. <laughs> <laughs> so um it's so great to meet you and uh, i'll just i'll just say for the people we met because you were you made a tiktok about me saying that you promised yourself help me if i get this wrong you promised yourself that you would work on making wearables and yes <laughs> but you wanted to make a six day man blanket <laughs> So, do. Do. <laughs> yeah. What do you like about the man blanket? Are you what's what's up with that? Like, are you gonna make that to colors, or do you have your own color combination in mind for it? Well, my so my thing is like blankets. Like everybody wants a blanket from me, and I do um, big blankets. So. When I heard about a man blanket, I was like, okay, well, that sounds big, and that sounds like <laughs> I can do literally as many colors as I want, and it would still look nice. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I was like, oh, yeah, I got I got to do that. If anything, just for, like, the guest room bed or, like, my bedroom. So, yeah. I, I love mine. I made it for... Um, well, I don't know if you've seen the pattern. I made it as a gift for somebody, a specific person, and I still haven't given it to them yet. <laughs> because I was like, I'm going to make this a pattern, and it's also going to go into my book. So I think that he will, um, he'll be okay with it taking like a year. It's been like a year since I moved yeah. out of that place. It was my former landlord. And, um, and uh yeah it's been like a year since i've moved out of there so <laughs> hang on there are i'm i am live on youtube as well so there are people i'm gonna pull this down there are people watching on youtube that can't see or hear you <laughs> <Just kidding>. oh. <laughs> there we go this is a you go by alia is it alia 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 um, this is Alea, and she was like the first one of the first people to make the six day hexagon cardigan. Um, tell me about your experience doing it in six days. Like you took that really seriously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it it was okay. So the pattern itself was probably one of the easiest things to follow oh, like wow. I, as a beginner crocheter one of the first things is like i go for the patterns 
and most patterns that I see are very, I don't know how to explain it, but like they're very in depth, but at the same time very vague or like the pictures aren't clear. So like if I'm, if I don't understand what's going on in the pattern, like I can kind of look at the picture, but like your, there was so many good clear pictures and the, like, if you really read it from beginning to end, like it definitely makes sense. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I just was like, this is probably the best, <laughs> one of the best patterns that I've ever read. And everything made sense besides the one thing that I asked you about. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just, it was a breeze. It, it was very much doable to do it in six days and it wow. was so enjoyable. So. Oh, thank you so much for saying so. And I, I really needed to hear it today because, um, it, you know, I when you have patterns out there on multiple platforms, and I've been doing this for a while, and I'll just say some of my earlier patterns are not as clear. So I have learned by, you know, I've learned through trial and error, and I've learned through people's comments when they don't understand something, you know, where I need to improve and where I need to clarify. But that mm-hmm. that pattern was actually um, we workshopped it in my membership community. So I had several people that were working on it, and I did not want to because you know there are other hexagon cardigan patterns out there, and I have never yeah. made one. So um, so people would say like, well, the campfire cardigan does this or this. You know, they're referencing like other patterns, and I would say, I don't want to look at that you know, because I want to really figure it out myself and I don't want to be like, um, plagiar, you know, like bringing in somebody else's pattern to do this. So there were, there were probably many times in the creation of that where I like re- had to reinvent the wheel for myself because I refused to like look elsewhere for help and instruction. So like part of that detail was like me breaking it down for myself and also like, how do I get this across? Because I'm not just making one size or one yarn or one version, but I want this pattern to be like a like a template so that people can take it and make any sweater that they want with it, any size, any you know, any yarn, all all the different options. So that was. I like my patterns to be adaptable because because if I don't, people are going to ask me how to adapt it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, well, that's I, what I liked about it too was that there was so many different options. And, like, if you wanted to add buttons, if you wanted to add a hood, if you wanted this type of sleeve, and or if you want to lengthen it i i thought i was like this is so it's like a it's like a workbook and i really like that thank you thanks so much and thanks for just making the sweater and posting so many cool videos and i just i think you're great thank you <laughs> i I'm love this i still got a couple of videos in my head you do <laughs> so. well just keep tagging me because i love seeing them I really, I really appreciate it. When you first sent it to me, I was like, oh, it's time. It's time to move everything out of the way. <laughs> but I love it because, like, that one thing I will say about most, um, gra- like, the traditional, like, granny square hexagon cardigan is, for me, I feel like, like, a regular granny square stitch is so, like, airy. Whereas this one, especially with the yarn that I use, it's more like a solid, like, not so much air is going through, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that's kind of like what I like. So I was very excited. Very excited. Absolutely love it. I love it, too. I love it, too. Yeah. What, did you did you say, was this the first hexagon cardigan you ever made? Yes. It was. The first one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell me what you did with the call with the collar band because you did something a little different and I really liked it. Okay, so I never made a collar, <laughs> but um, what I did was um, I did it's oh my gosh what's it called it's like it's like the ribbing it's like the single 
single crochet uh, back loop only ribbing. Mm -hmm. But what I did was, I don't know, I don't even know if this is allowed, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I did like a gradual. So like I did uh, three, then four, then five, then six, then the rest is seven all the way through. Uh -huh. And then I decreased it on the other side. Yeah. So, because I wanted it to look like, I don't know. I just wanted it to look like it blended in. Yeah. Like, um, but it turned out to be something different. I, I really do like yeah, it. Yeah, I like it a lot. So there's, so for the people on like the other platforms that can't see you, she took the button band and she did the narrow button band and then like right about here she increased the width so that it has like a wider collar and she just did the single crochet um back loop ribbing that's that's given in the pattern and um mm -hmm. looks really good really good yeah thank you. awesome well thank you so much for um for popping in and um making the sweater and and all that and i'm so happy to meet you and make your acquaintance make your friendship and see what you um see what you did with the sweater and i look forward to seeing everything you crochet going forward <laughs> yes thank you so much all right i'm gonna let you go you have a good night all right bye That was awesome. That was um that was Leah, my new friend from TikTok. So fun. Um okay, I think I missed a question over here. Somebody was asking about my name, Betty McNitt. It's a fake name. And um I also knit. I don't just crochet. All right, let's see where we are with the um sweater that i'm doing let me flip over and let me see who's on hey jerry from upstate kathy hi kaylin is here again trish hi everybody amanda is here Okay, here's where I um, here's where I ended yesterday. I'm gonna go in order of the pattern after the um, after seaming the shoulders. Last night I, I added width to the back. I seamed the back. I seamed the shoulders, and then the next thing it says to do is add length to the bottom. That should be fun. That's a good thing to do tonight. So here I go. I'm gonna start. I'm going to start um, just on one corner and I'm going to work just straight back and forth across the bottom for a few rows and um, I guess I would start this, I could start this way. I'll have one more right side row. So I don't remember if you all um, remember what I was saying about the, I have some right side rows and I have some wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's round start ding 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 we don't know what round it is yet though um let me see this is seven two three four five so I'll be starting with row six and I'll be doing the going down to the um hi D how are you I'll be going down to the working back and forth stitches so these stitches are a little bit weird the way they're written because depending on how long what you what choices you made so far you may or may not have like a corner a corner stitch or it's it's written so that for you to pick up on any row or also continue on any row so um some of the directions may not be relevant just depending on where your sweater 
started and um, where which row you ended on and where you are. So there's no way for me to know like what where everybody would be. So I had to give directions for everything. Um, okay, color time. All right, Andrew S. Are you ready for this? Andrew's my color picker. And Kathy, Andrew and Kathy pick the best colors. So. Let me see, I'll bring a caca. Is it time for a caca color? Everybody's over on YouTube saying hi to each other. This is all the bright blue there is left. Got a lot of caca colors. And got a lot of teal. What are we thinking? I'm kind of leaning towards this. <clears throat> Andrew S. says it's time for caca. We have to wait for YouTube to catch up. I don't have any more dark purple left. The dark purple's gone. I see this little row of single crochet over here. That was the very end of the dark purple. <laughs> This is a scrappy sweater, so unfortunately, this is all I have to work with. I have a ton of yarn, though. Andrew S. likes the dark gray. Sorry, Amy. Andrew S. beat to it, and they also agreed with me, so... <laughs> If you're watching on TikTok, go. We, I want you to go follow Andrew S. I don't have too many watchers right now. Usually around the hour mark, the viewership goes up. Top middle row. Okay. Now we're gonna ding, 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 row six. Duh, and then my mind, after I say that, does goes to, um, da, 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 that's like um, um, Super Smash Bros, right? Am I right? <laughs> there we go. Let me come in a little closer. All right, Duh, now it's stuck in my head. And I'm gonna start with a standing double crochet. And we're gonna double crochet across and then I'm gonna show you what I um, what I do when I cross over the seam like I have this seam right here and it's got two chain spaces and I found that I have to decrease over that um, over that chain space so that it, I don't end up with the work kind of splaying out And it's a good thing too to like make a note of how many double crochet I think I put this in the pattern make a note of how many double crochet and clusters you have when you're working back and forth because they shouldn't be increasing you shouldn't be ending up with more each time unless you're going around corners and then 
the um, the number of stitches will increase but when you're just working back and forth they should stay the same all right crocheters over on YouTube oh thank you Naomi um, crocheters over on YouTube I saw you all saying what you were working on but I think I missed it when I was talking to uh, Alea Alea <sighs> yes, I'm going back and forth across the bottom. You like the flared sleeves? Yeah, this one has, um, this one has, I gave three sleeve options, a straight sleeve, a flared sleeve, and a tapered sleeve. And I didn't do any ribbing on Maya's, so I'll have to, um, I'll have to figure out how I'm going to show how I'm going to show ribbing. Maybe I'll do a tapered sleeve and just do some ribbing on it. I have three more days of crochet along after this. And so let me see. Let me go back to the pattern and see what the order of the steps are and kind of decide what. So today I'm adding length to the bottom. And then tomorrow I'll do the sleeves. So tomorrow I will be on here at um, 10 a.m. Kathy is saying I couldn't see the person. Yeah, she was on TikTok. So unfortunately, I don't want I don't know how to bring her in. I don't know how to bring people in for TikTok. Um, They are uh, developing the platform so that people can go live on TikTok from their desktop, but I don't have that ability yet. Okay, so here's my chain space. Usually I will put two double crochet in each chain space, but it's just too much. So this is what I do when I cross a seam. I do one double crochet and then I do a double crochet two together decrease so I do half of the double crochet here and half of the double crochet over here and then I close it together it's kind of hard to see because it's dark yarn And it will close up even more when I work my seam because my seam's going to be a little bit tighter. And I do that at the um, at the top of the of the sleeve seam here as well. When I work over this, it'll be like this, and I'll decrease. I'll do a decrease over over the seam. It's just a little detail. Whoops. So yesterday my camera was all the way over here and today it's here. I gotta adjust. I haven't decided how many rows I'm going to do. I'm just going to go until I'm tired. Crafts by Crystal is also going to trying to get to a thousand. And so is Andrew S. I've only got 11 people watching right now, but, um, I'll go ahead and plug you guys so you can get more followers. We're trying to get Andrew. Andrew S. has been here every night going ding, ding, ding every time I start a new row and um, also um, helping me choose colors. So 
really trying to get Andrew S. up to 1,000 by the end of the crochet along so that they can come live with me crochet and we can chat a little bit. Aggravated giraffe. <laughs> I like that. Trish says, I'm working on my second hexagon going matchy matchy. That's cool. Matchy matchy's cool. Amy's working on the first color change of the tree skirt. I'm going to do the tree skirt crochet along in November. I think I said third through the seventh. I'm going to take a break after this crochet along and pattern release and uh, chill out a little bit because I'm tired. I've done a little too much lately, I think. Let me do something good for myself and drink some water. Look what I did. I wanted to like show off about drinking water. So look at the glass I put my water in. <laughs> Come on. Give me some good. Um, give me some good. Like praise me for drinking water. Aggravated giraffe says. I love your six day star blanket. I made one for my two years cousin and she totes it around everywhere. Oh, that's sweet. What does what mean? What are you talking about? What'd I say? Take a break. Matchy matchy. It means she's making this sweater the same way that you would, and she's matching the colors on each side. She's not doing what I did and making one side different from the other side. Because remember yesterday when I held it up and I said, what do you guys think? And a bunch of you were like, oh, I could never. <laughs> I could never not make both sides match. Matchy, matchy. Yeah, she's going to match it. She's matching sides. She's making the two sides the same. I just think it's fun being on um, the live and having you all pick the colors for me. That's fun to me. This is getting too big to work on like this. Kaylin says, I love to make scrap blankets, hats, scarves, etc. That's cool. I 
I think the six day star blanket is the perfect scrap blanket. I never thought so until um, Sissy Hankshaw on here. I believe her real name is Rain. Um, she posted that video of her scrappy blanket that she made. Trish says, I made two circular six-day kid blanket in 2020. It's amazing how quickly the pattern comes back to me. It's easy to remember. Yep. The only thing about, um, like, if you do the stars, the stars have, a, a each one has a different... On the single crochet row, row seven, round seven, when you work into the peak, those rows have a different number of single crochet that go into the peak. And um, that throws me off. <laughs> I, you can't, I can't just memorize it. I have to look at the pattern when I'm doing the stars. Because I can never remember which... I need a cheat sheet for that. Star blanket cheat sheet. Oh, I have a weird stitch there. What'd I do? I don't know, but this is the last row for this dark gray. I'm going to switch. I don't like to do too many rows of the dark colors like this. I have to do like one or two. Okay, look at all those ends. Oh! Pat Jacob says, the best six day kid blanket that I made was the cake mix. I would never have put those colors together, but it turned out to be gorgeous and I gave it away. Yeah, that was, I was inspired by somebody in the six day blanket group to start putting together different cake yarns that like, we don't, these don't look like colors that are gonna go together. I think that's one thing that has People say I have like a really good eye for color, but I don't think I do. I think I put colors together that I don't think go together just to see what they'll look like together and see if I'll like it. And I think that has um, expanded my palette quite a bit. Okay, I'm opening up it up like this so that we can see the colors. I didn't, I didn't matchy matchy, so now we have to think about what uh, some other things yeah a sweet flamingo says do you crochet over your ends as you go or do you weave in at the end I um weave in at the end uh if I'm like going over an edge I'll go over I might go over one or two stitches um but then I always weave it in and I do not tie knots So these are all the colors that are left. Oh no, there's one more. There's this, but this is all there is of this. 
And this is all there is of this. And there's a lot of this one. There's a lot of the most of this. And there's a ton of the Kaka collars because I cut them all out the other two. I have to do both. I get paranoid if I forget one or the other in the, of the mental process I made up. Yeah, I but I have learned the hard way that working over ends, just only crocheting over ends is not secure. And I've also learned the hard way that magic knot comes undone. And so I never use that. Okay, Kathy and Amy are saying this one. I'm going to do that one. I'm going to put these just to see if, how I do with putting these over to the side. The dusty pink. Does this look like pink to you all? Interesting because it looks like brown, beige. This is, this is the most cucka of all the cucka colors that I, <laughs> this one, I, maybe this one's more cucka. I don't know. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do maybe like three rows of it. Let's see how that goes. It looks sand colored. Yeah, I'd say that's probably about right. So this is how I change colors at the end of the row. I had a single crochet is the last stitch of the row here. Hey, Leanne. Um, I have a single crochet is the last stitch of the row. I didn't complete the single crochet. I'm going to complete it with my new yarn. So I'm just going to pull that through the last two loops of the stitch. And then these are my two tails for that yarn. And this is my working yarn. And I'm going to I'm going to adjust my tension so I'm not pulling too tight, but I'm, a, I'm, I'm pulling it to the correct tension and then I'm taking these tails up over the working yarn and holding them to the back, correct the tension, and then I'm chaining to start. So one, two, three, I believe is my, because I'm going on to round two. So ding, 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 round two. <laughs> Andrew S. said round seven. It's round two because it goes two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it repeats two through seven. So let's see what it says to do. It says to chain three, double crochet in the same space, same stitch. I think that's right. I want to make sure I do it right because people might watch this later after I've forgotten about it. Working back and forth. Chain three does not count. Double crochet in the same space. Skip two, three double crochet in the next space. Skip two, three double crochet in the next space. So, and I'm gonna do this across. And I did not do the DC three together in this row. I just worked straight back and forth across. And because we're not doing that DC three together, the stitch count might not be exact, okay? There might be a fudge where you have to skip one or three instead of two, okay? If that bothers you and you want it to be exact, um, you can use the DC3 together. I just didn't do it. Everybody agreed with this dusty pink this time. I didn't really um, see it as dusty pink, but now I'm seeing it like that.
I'm not being too picky about how much length I add. I'm just going to go until I get tired tonight. Maybe I'll just go till 1030 because that's what I scheduled. And then I can always add more later. I wanted to try and show all the elements of the sweater on this uh, live event, on this crochet along. got cold here it got into the 50s today I was cold I had to turn my heat up you know I'll, the thing I'll say about the magic knot uh, sweet flamingo is the people that want to use it are really um, attached to it. Oh, hey, you have to leave. Oh, statistics homework. Oh, my goodness. I remember what that was like. It was such a difficult class in undergrad. Hey, Mary. I know, memorizing, memorizing all those. And my, my poor professor, he would get so frustrated and he would say, I tried to explain it to you. I tried to, and nobody was getting it. And he would, that poor guy, he gets so frustrated. It was so hard. Oh, they said, I've had to fix so many blankets made with magic knots. You know, and people that use it, they say, I've never, I've never had one come undone. But you don't know that. Most of us give away most of, or sell a lot of what we make. So you don't know what happens to it. And your loved one probably would feel bad and not tell you it came undone. Thank you so much. This is the six day hexagon cardigan. I'm using Karen Ogo Big Donut yarn, but un unfortunately it has been discontinued. But you can um, substitute with your favorite worsted weight acrylic yarn that comes in solid colors. Oh, I just remembered somebody was asking about variegated. Um, people do use variegated yarn in the six day kit blanket. I think a really effective way to use variegated yarn is to use it on one of the granny stitch rows, like either two or three like one of these and it ends up looking like a little row of flowers it's really pretty it can it can be really really pretty i'm sorry i forget who asked that yeah they wouldn't have the heart i know i wouldn't if somebody gave me a blanket and the knots came undone i would feel bad so yeah it's just one of those things you know you have to uh <laughs> In my blanket group, I'm the person that always has to say, that says, you know, you have to swatch. <laughs> and it's like, I have this little meme in there that says, you'll shoot your eye out, <laughs> you know? Cause it's just like, they, you have to find out the hard way sometimes. No amount of telling people, you know, that can come undone and ruin your project. Same with starting, um, starting something like um, like this project, the hexagon cardigan, 
or a big star blanket or granny blanket, a big thing with a magic loop or magic ring or whatever they call it. It's not strong enough for that. It's not meant for that. So that really needs to be secured if you're going to start with just one piece of yarn going around the middle, holding together the middle of everything. So I always chain four and join in a loop. Flamingo says, oh my goodness, my bestie taught, I taught crochet is alternating solid yellow and variegated and it's turning out so cute. Yeah, I'll bet. Hi, Ma. I am using a J hook. Thank you for asking. I'm using a J hook with the worsted weight. Um, see, I feel like I'm going to be a little close over here, so I'm going to do, I'm just going to skip one. And then at the end, it's I think it's double crochet in the last stitch. Let me make sure I'm doing it right. Row. This is, what row is this, Andrew? Oh, I have two double crochet in the last, mine says two double crochet in the last space. It should be last space or stitch. I don't feel like I need to, but I'm going to do it because the pattern says to do it. I'm making the six day hexagon cardigan. Jimmy's Closet says, thank you for preaching about magic rings and granny patterns. I didn't know they came undone easily. Well, I appreciate the love that you just gave me right there because when I do preach and I feel like I'm nagging sometimes, um, uh, in fact, somebody recently said something like, um, you know, that's your ax to grind or something of that nature to me about it. And, um, yeah, Flamingo, you go study. <laughs> she says, I have, I won't get that homework done. You have an amazing Friday. <laughs> it's Thursday, my dear. <laughs> Unless maybe you're in Australia, but you have an amazing Friday tomorrow or whatever day or Friday is, and you get that homework done and go get those grades. <laughs> yeah, I I always I always preach about these things. I'm always saying magic knot comes undone, and um, that people get upset about it. People feel just like really attached to that technique. But um, and and somebody actually recently in a comment thread said to me like, well maybe you need to practice yours more, and I was like. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> I was like, who are you talking to? <laughs> who do you think you're talking to? I'm Betty McNitt. <laughs> I had a moment over that. <laughs> Mary, I don't use knots. I don't, and I don't, the only reason I would use a magic ring would be for an amigurumi project. I feel like it's appropriate there, but for a, <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> I know, I was just kind of like, uh, what am I doing? Like, why am I arguing with this person? <laughs> it was, I, I got, it's time to put the phone down. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, I just in general don't tie knots and I don't use a magic ring to start a, um, uh, a granny project. I use it for amigurumi so you can pull it really tight. But I and if you do use it for a granny project, I would I would go around. I would weave it back around three, four times and then reverse um, you know, pop out on the other side or go around like one thread in the bottom of one of those double crochets and then make the yarn go in the opposite direction 
that's one way to keep things from coming undone is to weave in one direction and then make it reverse and go back in the other direction at least once. Hi, Trish. Okay, so Trish has a really great question over here. She's saying, when the Craft Yarn Council says arm circumference is eight and a half inches for a certain size, is that with ease or not? I think that is the measurement of the arm itself without any ease. So I would add at least, well, eight and a half inches. If it's for a child, I'd add an inch or two. <clears throat> okay, ding, ding, ding. Row three, it says chain three. Let me turn my work. Three double crochet in each space across. Yeah, I avoid using knots at all if I can help it. Um, a knot to me is for an emergency when something has come undone. Maybe it's gotten caught on something or, um, you know, the yarn has been snagged or broken and then you have to fix it and there's nothing. I mean, that's the thing about magic knot when it comes undone. There's nothing to weave in. There's nothing to weave back in um, and it just starts unraveling. So in a situation like that, that's then, you know, if I had to, if I didn't have enough to weave in, then I would tie a knot and I would hide the knot somewhere if I could. But I don't tie knots if I can help it. I just, I feel like they show uh, no matter what you do, they show in the work. Perfect round five ended at 9.75 inches. That sounds good. Tell me what size again you, um, you're making, Trish. Hi, Hillary. Thanks for the follow. Thanks for the likes. Yeah, so when I talk about like magic knots and magic rings and then um, I feel like I'm saying you're shoot your eye out because people really want to use them even though they come undone. And then when you make a, when you tie a magic knot and then whenever you see like a tutorial video or an instruction about how to tie a magic knot, when they're done tying the knot, what they do is they pull it as hard as they can like that and they say that's never coming undone look at that how tight it is so the problem with that is like what i what i think about or what i compare that to is like you know that like toy that paper toy that you put your fingers into and you pull it like that and you can't get your fingers out but you have to push in to get your fingers out of it. So I feel like the magic knot is a little bit like that. And I don't know if I'm correct, but this is just how my mind works. When you put that knot into your crochet project, it's not the tension on it is not going to be straight. It's going to be three dimensional because it's going to be like hooked around a, um, a in a in a stitch, right? And then it's so it's going to be twisting and I feel like it's the, the, the pressure on the threads is going, the tension is going to be relaxed. So it's like going to be going in like that. And that's how it comes unraveled, not by being pulled, but by be relaxing into itself. And then when that item is used, the abrasion of it, it's it's not going to be experiencing the tension of being pulled like that. It's going to be experiencing different types of abrasion and tension. So I believe that's 
why it comes undone. Um, and it doesn't matter how good you tie them, really, because you're, you're cutting the ends so short. It's not a it's not something I'm willing to take a chance on. Size eight for a big four year old. That sounds good. Sounds about right. You want them to be able to wear like a little shirt or something underneath it. Yeah, but when that um, when that person said maybe you need to practice more, I thought I'm being I am being preachy. <laughs> I'm being a nag. I'm like your mom. You'll shoot your eye out. Put your coat on. Don't tie magic knots. That's gonna come undone. <laughs> yeah, some yarns become more slippery when wet. They're going to be washed, so they're gonna be experiencing this like three dimensional. Um, you know, movement, not this, you know, not tension, equal tension in two directions. So I was going to do three rows of this color, but I'm sick of it. So what should I do next? Thanks for following. <laughs> oh hey freeze baby good to see you andrew s this one the denim blue oh that's nice That'll be so cool. Yeah, good to see you. You're using big cakes. Which big cake colorway are you using? That should be great. Um, we had the, I had a little, it wasn't a tester group, but it was like a design. I have a design workshop group in my, um, in my membership community with people who like to do, uh, um, you know, I like to work on just my people, you know, whatever. Um, but we had, I had somebody use skinny cakes, Karen skinny cakes. And then Kathy, you used a cake, right? You used one of the Karen cakes. Freeze Baby, I did, um, this is my third night, so you can watch the replays on YouTube if you need to be walked through the um, cardigan stitches. Boysenberry. Oh, that's a good one. It's going to be pretty. Andrew S., Kathy agrees with you. This is the one I have the most of. Let's see how many people are over here. Kathy is saying hers took two uh, big cakes. And at the end of this row, you do a double crochet in the last stitch. So I didn't count 
the number of double crochets that I have. But to me, it's looking like this is a pretty straight edge, so I think I'm okay. Freeze Baby says she has six. You're good. You're good. You got plenty. Okay. This is going to be next. I'll pull it through the last two loops of my last double crochet in this row. I'm going to cut this yarn. And take the two ends and I flip them up over the working yarn. And then I just, so th this is what I will end up doing. I put that one like that when I do this edge. And I'll put this one like this. And then when I make my edge, I'll just work over it for like one or two stitches. And then I'll leave it dangling. And then when it's all complete, I'll weave it in. Hi, Kitty. Kitty von Lichtenstein. Good night, Dee. Oh, goodness. Dee, I was thinking of you the other day. I should have said this before you, like, said good night and tried to leave. Um, but I was without Wi-Fi yesterday for, like, half the day, and I was like, Oh, how does D do it? But you have a good night, my dear. I hope you get some rest. Thank you, Kitty. This is the six-day hexagon cardigan. And I'm using Karen Ogo Big Donut with a J hook. Um, unfortunately, the Big Donut, I believe it's been discontinued. I haven't been able to find any more. Um, but you can substitute any worsted weight acrylic that you like. I love this denim blue color. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Still don't have TV or Wi Fi. Oh my goodness. I'll say I got a lot of housework done. <laughs> I still have a bunch of stuff in my car from my trip up the road last week and I decided for my exercise today I'm going to bring some things in from the car. I'm going to spend 20 minutes bringing in stuff from the car and that's what I did. I'm crocheting a cat hat so I'll hang out with you in the meantime. Cool. Check out, so to speak, on Insta. Okay. I just, I want, I'll just say this again, because I said it at the beginning of the live. Um, I have a lot of followers on Facebook and my groups. I have my crochet groups over there. And um, I want to just encourage everybody to follow me. If you're following me on Facebook or you're in my Facebook groups, follow me on one other platform. Um, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, um, just because Facebook is being weird and they may have make these updates all the time and then the pages and the groups don't behave the way they once did. So if you want to keep up with what I'm doing, 
sign up for my email list, um, <clears throat> subscribe on one of my uh, one of my channels, bookmark my website, do something. Not you know if you're on Facebook, don't just follow Facebook because that platform is being so weird. I I can't edit some of my posts. You know, I posted a um I posted a pre-sale coupon the other night and I can't take it down. So people are still like wanting to trying to use that coupon and I, it expired and I can't take down the post. I mean, I can't edit. I'd like to be able to edit the post and just remove the coupon code, remove pre-sale and just like make it regular. I'm just going to have to take it down. Other weird things are happening. Hey, Debbie, how you doing tonight? Ding, ding, ding. Round five, row five. When you say you're crocheting a cat hat, are you crocheting a hat for a cat or a hat that looks like a cat? Hi, Doris. Thanks for following. It's a beanie. It's a beanie that looks like a cat. For yourself. Cool. <laughs> of course it's for you. You're Kenny Kitty von Lichtenstein. You just finished your class and you're working on your tree skirt. Cool. Yeah. Which tree skirt are you making, Debbie? I know, Amy, you're making the star uh, tree skirt. As you all are working with through those patterns, could you maybe do me a solid and just, like, mark some places and let me know where you think it would be helpful to have a photo? Because I know those um, patterns... Oh, you're doing, you're both doing the star. Okay. I know that um, those patterns do not have a lot of progress photos in them. So when I do the crochet along, I can, I can stop and take progress photos as I'm doing it. Uh, so, and what happens is as I'm designing, I don't always work up the sample to this to the actual stitches I figure things out later and then I go back and redo so I'm not in like progress a progress photo place so I and when I rework through those I want to take some progress photos so if you have like any thoughts about where you think a progress photo is needed just um, jot it down and let me know Hey, Doris. She says, hello, this is my first time coming on. I'm enjoying your crocheting. I crochet lap blankets and granny. Oh, that's wonderful. Welcome to TikTok. <laughs> Thanks for following. My most well-known patterns are the Six Day Kid Blanket and the Six Day Star Blanket. So I'm definitely a blanket person, but this is actually the Six Day Hexagon Cardigan. So I brought that little gnat trap in here when I first came in and first started going live. And... Um, 
the gnat population has dwindled just in that time. Oh, now I see an ant. <laughs> Great. Eclectic Cart by Chris. Hello, I've been learning to crochet. I started out as a knitter. Crochet seems faster. Crochet is faster. I also knit. I started out as a crocheter. And at a certain point, at some point, and I don't think I ever really talked about this on a live before. But at, there was a certain point where I got mad at crochet. I think it was when I made something without securing my ends and the whole thing fell apart. And I had this moment where I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to learn how to knit instead. And so I taught myself how to knit. And for a long time, I did not crochet unless... I wanted to do something really fast <laughs> and then I would crochet it like make a blanket um, but I did nothing but knit for a really long time and then crochet kind of made a comeback um, my experience and this may not this may not this may just be my perception it might not be reality but um, I seem to remember like this resurgence of crochet where people wanted to crochet again and people wanted to make these like granny square stuff and these vintage looking things, which for a time were um, kind of thought to be kind of like tacky or not so cool to make. Or maybe that was just my own um, perception. Yeah. And then... Um, I had posted this pattern, the six day kid blanket online just for the heck of it. And it, it went viral. And that's when I started crocheting again. That was just a couple of years ago. Um, I mean, crocheting, like crocheting and not knitting. I still knit sometimes. I have a really great course in my membership community called Crocheters Learn to Knit. Most people learn, I think, if you learn crochet first and then try to knit, it's harder to knit. But if you know how to knit and then you want to learn how to crochet, crochet seems it, it's very it's much easier to learn. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate it. The colors were put together. These are this what I'm working with here is two or main two different colorways of the Karen Ogo Big Donut. One of them was called something like Choco Blueberry, and the other one I don't remember what it was called. Um, but it was a lot of blues and um. They were on clearance, and one of them was like not even a. One of them was like a damaged skein. It was it was not even put together. It was, you know, like falling apart. Um, but it was on clearance, and we liked the colors. My daughter was with me, and she helped me pick out the colors. The first jacket I made, I I took the cakes apart and I took out some of these more neutral colors. I just decided I didn't like them. And I just mostly did blues, just a little bit of um, this dark gray. I don't think I put any of these. And now I'm just using up the leftovers. <laughs> I'm making another sweater. <laughs> Is 
so I'm, I'm going to play this every time I drink water. Oh! <laughs> I crack myself up. I really need the encouragement because I don't like drinking water. I'm going to keep going with this denim blue because I have a lot of this. So let's see. Ding, ding, ding. Round row six. Thanks for the likes. I don't know what just happened with my phone, but thank you. <laughs> The six day kid blanket stitches are one row of single crochet, two rows of granny cluster stitches, another row of single crochet, two rows of double crochet, and chevron. Well, I'm not chevroning for this sweater, but it's okay. For a long time, people would say, could you make that blanket without the zigzags and I would say no could you make it into a granny square and I would say no it's not six day kid blanket unless it's chevrons but then I got over myself <laughs> and now I just do it <laughs> So I released a granny square pattern earlier this year um, with the six day kid blanket stitches. That went really well. And then I started working on this cardigan. And now in the in my membership community, the Betty McNitiverse, we're working on octagons and triangles and different shapes. That's kind of like the next thing that I'm working on. Water is good for your skin and it's good for your kidneys. Mm -hmm. I know it's good for me. I know I need to drink more of it. It's good for your lymphatics. And I have problems in that area because I have lipedema. I can't get this color change started because it is my first experience not nodding practice makes perfect so I would say just tie a loose knot just do one square knot and you and and don't just don't pull it really tight and you can undo it when you weave in your ends if you want I mean I did that for years I used to tie knots and then it was probably some knitting project where I figured out like Oh, I can just like wrap the yarn, wrap the tails around the next working yarn and that holds it there without leaving a gap or leaving a hole or having it come undone. But yeah, if you need to tie a knot, um, tie a knot and you can pull it out later. But the magic knot is this really tight little knot that people tie and they pull it really tight and then they trim the, the ends off so that they don't have to weave an end at all. They don't have any ends and then they just rely on that knot that has that's tied, tied up by the very ends, the tips and the ends. And people swear by them but I'm, that, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Some people tie magic knots and then they and they, they leave the tails and weave them in or tie knots and and then um, leave tails that they weave in later and I think that that's more secure but personally I would just not tie the knot if you're gonna weave in an end what's going on here webcam utility come on now
There we go. Yeah, I had to change my battery for my overhead camera. My battery lasts about an hour, an hour and a half, something like that, and then I have to change it out. How many rows did I do tonight? I started with that dark gray. It's so one, two, three, four, what? Gray? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did seven rows. I think I'll um, maybe do uh, the next row after this which is a single crochet row and then stop for the night. I'm going to be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Is that right? 10 a.m. or is it noon? Let me check my calendar so I'm not saying the wrong thing. Tomorrow is noon, and then Saturday is 10 a.m., and then Sunday is 5 p.m. Noon, thank you. Ding, 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 row seven. Where's Andrew? Noon, 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 tomorrow is noon. Kitty says, this was so nice and peaceful. Oh, thank you, Kitty. I appreciate the kind words. The life keeps kicking you out. Oh no. Yeah, you're not number one tonight. You've been number one every night before now. I appreciate the kind words. I take the harsh words to heart. It's like the impact of one harsh comment is like so magnified. 
So it really helps to know, I need to hear that, that you enjoy it, because I have had people say, stop talking to your friends and do your tutorial and tell us what you're doing and go through the stitches. And I, I mean, this is a single crochet row. You don't need me to sit here and say, single crochet and another single crochet and another single crochet and another single crochet. I mean, my goodness, we would all be bored sick. <laughs> hey, Mama Bear, thank you for the follow. Yeah, people can just, people, it, I know it's not about me, and I try not to engage, but sometimes I do, <laughs> and it always, <laughs> every time I do, I remind, it's a reminder why I have a policy to just not engage when people are, you know, negative, but it just happens when you put yourself out there. You open yourself up to it. The crass crafter, I like that. <laughs> Wonderful. So I'm about to end the live in just a few minutes. And I want everybody to follow Andrew S. Crochets um, and share their um, share their video. They're asking for followers. We really want to see Andrew S. make it to a thousand by the end of my crochet along so that they can come on live with me and we can meet face to face. Yeah, hit the like button on YouTube. Hit the subscribe. Hit the, oh, thank you, Kitty. Hit the, um, hit the subscribe, the bell for notifications. Do that. Uh, follow on, um, yeah, if, if you're on YouTube and subscribe over there and you'll be notified when I go live over there. I am looking forward to when TikTok, um, when I can just go live on all, you know, all the platforms on one device at once, but right now I'm making it work. And it's really fun having your comments, you know, come up and and um, just have people hang out with me. Like, I've really been having a great time doing these lives. I, have a, a, I really enjoy it. Yeah, I get the most comments on TikTok, actually. Um... For whatever reason, the Facebook comments aren't coming up tonight, so I don't know if maybe nobody's watching over there, or maybe, um, yeah, I have streaming software that I use. And I have moderators that help me out too, so shout out to Kathy who's been helping me out on YouTube and keeping the YouTube channel, you know, safe from those scammers and weirdos and Fruit Loops. That's okay, Misty, don't worry about it. You know, the videos will always be there for you and I'm, you know, I'm available to you to help out when you're ready to start again. Hooked on Stitches Facebook Live. Facebook in general has been weird lately. It's been very weird. I'm not, yeah, that's why I, I've been, I've been telling people on this live to like, if you're following me on Facebook, make sure that's not the only place you're following me because I just feel like the platform is, it doesn't work the way that it once did. It really doesn't. So here's what I've got so far. And then I'll be here tomorrow at noon. Yeah, yesterday, <laughs> Fruit Loops, yesterday, um, Misty, uh, over on YouTube said, 
I didn't know we were supposed to bring cereal to the live. Somebody brought their Fruit Loops because we had a couple, you know, are all weirdos <laughs> making weird comments. <laughs> Can I be your moderator? Like, no, you know, just, you know, where I don't have to say everything that happened. You know, you all know. <laughs> Yeah, it really cracked me up. I didn't know we were supposed to bring cereal to the live. <laughs> yep, so here we go. Six-day hexagon cardigan. I'll see you here at noon. I'm going to extend these sleeves a little bit. And then, um, yeah, and then I'll have two days to add the hood and, um, and the buttonhole band. Yeah. Trish says, I got bored with knitting. It got to be I could look at a pattern and understand the concepts. Revisiting crochet, I found it has been blooming with new concepts and stitches and keeps me challenged. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like for me, it's easier to like freehand with crochet. Um, but I really do love knitting too. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Kathy, for helping out. I really appreciate you. Thank you, TikTok, for being here and hanging out. This is really fun. It's been really fun. Um, I put my tripod away. I don't know why I did that. All right. Good night, everybody. Mwah.